Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to get right back into the Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. We are now in chapter number six. This is take two, and it goes like this. Examples of the disrespectful language the black woman uses when speaking to the black man are as follows. And I have 40 examples, and it goes like this. Number one, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Two, why don't you mind your own business? Three, you're such a mama's boy. Four, you ain't nothing and you ain't never going to be nothing. Five, you don't tell me what to do. Six, you do what you want to do and I'll do what I want to do. Seven, get it yourself. Eight, you think you're right all the time. Nine, I get tired of you trying to tell me what to do. Ten, why don't you act like a man? Eleven, you full of sh. S H. A vowel and a consonant. Finish the rest of the word. Number 12, that doesn't make any sense. 13, don't give it unless you can take it. 14, you didn't have nothing when I met you. I'm going to repeat that, so I'll bleep. Let me repeat it again. 14, you didn't have nothing when I met you. 15, your family ain't shh, and you ain't either. 16. Men are dogs. 17. I do what I want to do. 18. I might and I might not. 19. Why don't you hush? 20. Be quiet. 21. Shut up. 22. You so stupid. 23. You can't do that. 24. Leave me the f alone. You need a vowel and two consonants to finish that one out. 25. You mess up every time. 26. I go where I want to go. 27. It's my money and I spend it like I want to. 28. You get on my nerves. 29. It ain't your baby anyway. 30. I told you so. 31. My mother said you wasn't no good. I should have listened to her. 32. You'll know payback when you see it. 33. If you don't, somebody else will. 34. You can't do nothing. 35. Stop. 36. Get out of my face. 37. I don't want to hear that. 38. Get out. 39. I don't care what you do. 40. I'm tired of you. Of course, these are just a sample. There are others which are more vicious and more degrading and some too filthy to list and print. It is safe to say that every black man in America has been told at least two of these statements in a relationship with his woman or his mother. Most have heard the majority of them, 
These remarks roll off the lips of the black female starting in elementary school, so they are well ingrained in her conversation by the time she is an adult. Rare is there a black man who does not allow the black woman to speak to him in these derogatory terms. No black man should tolerate being spoken to like this. He must demand respect and deserve it according to his own standards of being a man. He must require respect or reject the black woman from his circle of contact. When the black woman loves her black man enough to obey him and do what he tells her to do, she is looked upon by other more progressive black women as a fool. She is laughed at and pitied for letting her man control her and tell her what to do. If she stays at home and waits for his call, cooking him a special meal, cleans the house, cleans, excuse me, not the house, cleans his house, washes his car, shines his shoes, and iron his clothes. Loans him her car, lends or gives him money, runs errands for him, picks up after him, rubs his back, massages his feet or does anything else to help him or make him comfortable, she is considered a nutcase and accused of spoiling the black man. She is further charged with making it harder on other black women who do not cater to their men in that way. The righteous woman is asked by the rebellious woman, what's he doing for you? Why are you doing all this for him? If the black woman just speaks to him in a silver tone, she is charged with being weak-willed. Black women pride themselves on being assertive, aggressive, and speaking what she thinks is her own mind. When the black woman talks badly to the black man, she is not speaking her own mind. She is speaking from the artificial mind she has adopted from Western civilization, America. This is something she learned first in slavery. From then, from teachers, politicians, the newspaper, and television. The black woman has no history of speaking disrespectfully to the black man before she came to America. Disrespecting the black man is new to the black nation. It developed in slavery and post-slavery. It is odd that the black woman considers downgrading the black man as advancement in our own development of equality. The black man must not allow his woman or any woman to talk to him in a disrespectful tone, our way. He does not deserve it and does not have to take it. If to defend himself, the black man develops a feminine style of sparring with the black woman and tries to go blow for blow with her in insults, bickering and name calling, the woman will tell her family and friends that he just bitches all the time. She refers to this participation as bitching because she knows her kind of talk is indicative to the female gender only. She believes it to be a natural part of her nature and wants him to believe that too. He should not. If the black man loses his cool under pressure and responds by flinging a sting of colorful metaphors, cuss words, at her, she complains that he talks to me like a dog. The fact that she is the one acting like an animal never comes up. 
Sometimes a black man grows to respond to everything she says in a harsh rebuttal tone. He becomes accustomed to the rough talk and uses it as frequently as she. This is wrong. It only convinces the black woman that he can't handle her. So he has just joined her. She will drag him under the earth if he allows it. When a black man falls for a black woman and begins to demonstrate that he loves her more than he loves himself. She recognizes this as a ripe stage for her to really let it rip. The more he professes his love, the worse she will treat him. The more he tries to give her, the more she will demand. And the more he tries to bed her down, the more she rejects, rejects excuse me, his overtures. The harder he tries to please her, the more critical she is of his efforts. This is a perfect example that she does not know what to do when put in a position to rule the black man. When she is allowed to rule, she thinks the black man must be weak, or crazy, or both. She cannot handle it. She abuses him instead of progressively enjoying him more. And the time is not far off when she will be looking for another man. Sometimes the black woman speaks kindly to the black man or does nice things things for him for the wrong reason. Sometimes her reason is to just make sure that he does not fall victim to the attentions of another woman. So she acts out the duties of being a good woman so her man can't use that as a reason to fool around. So she goes through the motions so she can never be charged with not holding up to her end or so she thinks. But true caring and affection cannot be faked. If there is no love and good spirit put into the care, it becomes dry and sterile, bland and mechanical. The black woman must be made to understand that the black man must first feel good about himself and that she should help the black man to feel good about himself when he is with her. That means that when the black man is happy with the black woman, it does not necessarily mean he is happy with her physical affection or exciting personality as much as he, as much as, excuse me, with how she makes him feel about himself. He will reciprocate. When the black man is pleased with himself and feels good about himself, his days are happy and he is radiant. He is eager to go off to work and eager to come home at night. In general, he is more productive. This is called satisfaction. Feeling good mentally, emotionally, and physically creates its own natural high. An elevation to peace and freedom and confidence and courage, anything can be accomplished. All of this is part of the black woman's responsibility to herself. The blessings she will receive for making her black man feel good about himself are unlimited. While she has her own ideals about what the black man should do to make her happy, she would be much wiser if she gave the black man a chance to express his ideas about what will make her happy. A black man can look at his woman and decide what she needs. Hmm. Before I end this take, I'm going to complete that last line just one more time. Meditate, ponder, let it sink in. A black man can look at his woman and decide what she needs. 
And on that note, I want you to be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. And till we talk again here on Poem Praise 2 for take 3 of chapter 6. Stay tuned. And I'll be speaking with you real soon. Till then, later y'all.